How many shell casings are in this pile? Okay, so this is the OSINT equivalent of guess how many jelly beans are in this jar, but it's actually pretty important because we can kind of figure out barrel life where from the number of shell casings that are scattered on the ground. So let's do that. Now this picture came from Twitter, which originally came from TikTok. It shows a Russian soldier firing a Mr. B 152 millimeter howitzer, and then it pans right to show all the shell casings. A couple of things to note. The Mr. B has been in service since 1987, first with the Soviet Union and then later with the Russian Federation. The B stands for Boksaidi Yemoyet, which literally means towed. The Howitzer is normally towed by a Kras or a Ural six-wheeled truck. And Mista is not an acronym. It's actually the name of a river near Veliki Novgorod. Now, some people might think this is kind of weird because it's only being fired by a crew of one. American Howitzers, like the M777, normally have a crew of at least eight. Now, I'll have a whole explanation of how the M777 works. That'll be uh, up here somewhere or at the end of this video. But if you watch some Russian training videos, it looks like it's pretty common practice to have just one person firing and a few people off to the rear, perhaps for safety reasons. Also notice right after firing, the shell doesn't come out of the gun, uh, as it does in this video here. The shell is normally ejected from the gun after firing. I didn't notice this at first. Uh, it came from a Dutch analyst named uh, Paul Storm von Leyland. So thank you for pointing that out to me, Paul. This is a concern for me because it means this gun is probably unsafe. It's being fired in a degraded condition because the shell isn't being spit back out again. So if the shell extractor is broken, the shell ejector is broken, then maybe other things are about to break on that weapon as well. Now, I mentioned back on June 25th that Russian artillery guns, after four months of fighting, were nearing the end of their useful life and they were going to have to go back to depot for reset. And if they didn't do that, the guns would become really inaccurate, start exploding and start breaking. And I think that's what we're seeing here. So the Russian TTP or tactic techniques and procedures for operating that gun with one guy, that may be a, a safety rule so that if the gun explodes, only one guy gets injured or killed. One more thing to notice, this particular soldier is not wearing a helmet or body armor. He's wearing a hat and, and a shirt. That's it. And normally the images coming out of occupied Ukraine, when Russian soldiers are firing artillery, they have a helmet on, they have body armor on. And that's probably because they are afraid of Ukrainian counter-battery fire. Whenever you fire an artillery shell, your adversary can usually use radar to detect where that artillery shell came from. They just draw a line back to where it came from, and they can fire artillery at you. So the fact that this guy isn't wearing any PPE, any personal protective equipment, leads me to believe that maybe he's in a training area somewhere. Also know that this huge pile of shell casings would be like a beacon for any kind of Ukrainian drone operator, and they would call in artillery or rockets right on that position. So this is another case that this particular video may have been taken behind the lines or in a very safe training area, or perhaps they're using broken howitzers to train some of their new troops who are going to be replacing people inside the actual active combat areas. But this video is really about the shell casings, right? How many shell casings are there in this pile? Now, based on the berm to the left, I don't believe this is a pile of shell casings. I believe this is a pile of shell casing that was thrown up against the defensive berm. So I don't think this is a mountain of shell casings. I think this is a bunch of shell casings in the dirt. That being said, let's talk width and height. Luckily, we know two things for sure. The width of this box here is 830 millimeters by 484 millimeters by 270 millimeters, or in inches roughly 33 by 19 by 11. And I know that because I can order these 152 millimeter shells online with the proper paperwork. And this is the box they come in. I also know the length of the Howitzer carriage trail. That's this leg right here. It's about 2.15 meters or about seven feet. The average height of a Russian man is roughly 176 centimeters or 510. So we have some stuff to work with here. We have some good measurements which we can compare. So if I take the box and extend it out to here, I cover roughly two and one third boxes. So that's roughly 1,933 millimeters or 70, 76, 77 inches, about two meters. So remember how I said that the carriage trail was 2.15 meters? So we're in the ballpark here. We can carry this up and we can start from the base of the leg. We roughly have 1.5 box lengths or 1.5 meters, a little under five feet. So the length is two meters, 
and the height is 1.5 meters. But what we really need is the slope because this is we're, what we're really getting is the surface area of the slope. So now we have to talk about angle of repose. And this is basically the steepest angle that a material can remain in a pile without slumping. So for the most part, nothing can be piled at over 45 degrees without slumping. And different materials are different angles of repose. Uh, wheat has an angle of repose of 26 degrees. You can't pile it higher than 26 degrees. Gravel can have an angle of repose up to 45 degrees. It can be at a 45 degree angle, a whole pile of gravel. Now, dirt can have an angle of repose between 30 and 45 degrees, but we're not really looking at the angle of repose of dirt. We're looking at the angle of repose of the shell casings on top of the dirt. There's really no angle of repose for brass shell casings, at least none that I could find. But what's kind of similar is a coffee bean between 35 and 45 degrees. So I'm just going to go with 35 to start. So if I plug that into a right triangle height at 1.5 meters, I get uh, 2.615 meters on the hypotenuse. This translates to about 8.6 feet. So now we know the base of the mound is 2 meters and the hypotenuse is 2.6. Then we can get a rough estimate of the surface area as 5.23 uh, square meters. Now, I couldn't find any information on the length of the shell casing, but if the base of the shell is 152 millimeters, this is a 152 millimeter shell, if I turn that upright, I can get the length. 578 millimeters or roughly 23 inches by 152 millimeters or six inches. That means a shell casing that take up a maximum plane surface area of 138 square inches or 0 0.089 square meters. Now, you just gotta divide that area and you get 58. Now, so I can say there's roughly 58 shells in this pile. But I might add 10% for some of the shell casings that rolled off the pile or to the side. So let's say 64 shells. So if we're using 2,500 as the mean barrel life, that pile of shells represents 2.6% of that Mr. Howitzer's barrel life. So if all of those shells were fired in one day, it would take about 39 days for the barrel to get worn out. And that's assuming the barrel isn't worn out already, because we're already seeing this thing isn't extracting or ejecting. So about 64 shells in that pile should be the answer. If you want to check my math, my math will be down below in the pinned comments and in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.